What's going on, everybody? Q here, back with another episode of Press Play. That's right, the flagship series for Project Nerd. If you're listening to this podcast or watching this vidcast, you're guaranteed to find something you're going to like. We talk about all sorts of stuff. Movies, people, situations in the world, comics. Those are about all the things that I can think of. <laughs> this guarantee is uh, a big, uh, big promise. <laughs> yeah. If you if you don't find something you like, we promise your money back. You didn't pay any money anyway, so that's you can it, keep fair. you can keep your money. That's fine. Um, today is a very special episode, though, and I'm I'm very excited to sit down and chat because we at Project Nerd, if you are a longtime listener, a longtime follower, or if you're brand new to the brand, we are, we are hitting a momentous occasion. Uh, right now, as a matter of fact, if you're watching this episode, it's happening. We are in the time period, but it is the 10th anniversary of Project Nerd. That's right. 10 years we have been doing this kind of stuff. We've been talking movies with you guys. We have been talking events with you guys. We have been doing comics with you guys. We have literally like there are so many things that Project Nerd has been a part of. We've been turning off and air purifiers with you guys. That's what I just did. That's right. You <laughs> helped us. You it, thank you. Thank you. You know who you are for letting us know. Um but I do want to say speaking of our our special guest, we have the mastermind. The guy, the the spring from which Project Nerd came forth. And I don't know if he needs an introduction. He's on about a bajillion different series on the network over the past 10 years. But just in case, I've got Iggy with me. What's happening? What's up, Q? I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to be on this podcast. And I'm excited to talk our 10th anniversary, man. This is pretty, pretty dang like, special. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the that was like a that was a very big build up for a very like dang special. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm excited to be here talking with you because I would consider myself one of the kind of newer project nerd personalities. Right. Like I'm somebody who came to the brand uh, only a handful of years, but. Yeah, because we, we don't even really know, is the last three years three years? Is it one year? Is it 30 years? Is it five years? million years? We don't, pandemic has made us lose track of all of that. <laughs> no, so no, time right. doesn't exist anymore. Quentin, like you might have been here longer than the rest of us. We don't even I have, know that. I <laughs> actually came before somehow okay. Project Nerd was even a thing. Um, it's like a tenant thing. <laughs> it is. <It's> like, <laughs> if you, I'm going, you're going this way and I'm going this way. It's, okay. you know, um, but in in all seriousness i guess it it blew my mind not only when we first connected um but when when i found out that the brand had been around for 10 years and 10 years of you know various versions of what project nerd and i would imagine and i'm going to ask you the project nerd of 10 years ago must look pretty different from the project nerd of today God, it looks incredibly different, like um, in every level. Well, one, I'd serve as most of the graphic des design work on there. And where I've come in 10 years is, <laughs> God, I look back at some of our early stuff. Uh, but yeah, we were just a blog in March 20th of 2012, right? That was just the first blog wow. post went up connected to a Project Blue, which was a Blu-ray review site that I contributed to. Nice. Um, it was interesting. And within a couple months, uh, Tyler, uh, who has been on uh, the Oscar episode we we did and aired yep. already, as well as a lot of nerdcasts, was the one who would him and Adam and a few other friends would come over weekly and just we would just talk stuff. And Tyler was the one who's like, let's throw a microphone down on that table and add <laughs> podcasts. And and then, uh, you know, don't like to give her credit for too many things. But my ex-wife was the one when we went to events was like, let's do it this way and took her iPad we had and was like, I'm with project nerd. What time's your interview? And the celebrities were like, I, I guess one o'clock. And then that started and it just That's steamrolled great. and steamrolled and built and built. And along the way, many amazing people, including yourself have joined forces with us and added not only content, but added creative aspects and, and just contribute in ways that I think pe even ways people don't see when they just enjoy the brand. So it sure. has definitely evolved in people, size, scope, what we're doing, every to look and feel, um, everything really. 
That's wild. So what what some people may not know is kind of what is the origin story? Because I know you mentioned Project Blue, but what what kind of spawned the idea for creating Project Nerd initially? The origin story is not that exciting. I mean, it's uh, it is <laughs> no murdered parents. No, no, um, not this isn't a DC comic, unfortunately. Um, no radioactive but... animal bites. <laughs> no. And I didn't get stuck in any kind of experiment either. But <laughs> uh, essentially, I was retail management, which you and I have talked about a lot because yeah. our outside career paths have kind of been very similar as well. Yeah. And uh, I was retail management, which you work crazy hours and, and holidays and stuff. And 2012 was um, significant because twenty, uh, my daughter was born in 2010. So by time 2011 rolled around and my, she's a year old and my son starts kindergarten and I'm like, I can't do this holiday schedule anymore. So I found a, an office job and I was cold calling actually as an office job and uh, asked permission. I always ask permission for your day job. I was like, listen, I, I'm hitting my numbers. I'm setting new marks and everything. So obviously nothing to worry about. Do you mind if I just start typing a few blog posts along the way on my personal computer, like not even, and they're like, yeah, I mean, as long as you're getting your stuff done. Uh, so I just had more time and then project nerd maybe had less time, but <laughs> see, you know, it's, it's how it works. Um, that was kind of the origin story. So project nerd is often joked about as being my third child. And I guess the main reason it exists is because of my two children. I love that. I love that. Now, when you started originally, I know the vision for Project Nerd was something kind of totally different. Like you'd mentioned, it was it started out as just a blog, right? Just a place to put kind of nerdy thoughts and opinions and and kind of interactions with the world. So we've touched on the fact that obviously now anybody who's tuned in to us knows that we have, you know, a ton of amazing podcasts and we put out awesome video series and we're at a ton of live events every year. But what is one of kind of your favorite achievements along the way for Project Nerd over the past 10 years? Like what was one of those moments where you like paused and went, this is really awesome that we have now gotten to this point? I gosh, there's various ones for various reasons, but you're right. Like not just Project Nerd, when you talk about it, look at look at the way we use the Internet, we watch TV, we consume content has evolved massively over the ne last 10 years. And I think it'll evolve over the next 10 years. I think right now as we're sitting here having this conversation is one thing because it's the fact that we survived all that for 10 years. And you remember our first 10 years is a lot of people volunteering their free time outside of doing what they're already doing and their families and their lives. Right. So totally. mine too. Like I've gone through divorce. I'm getting remarried. I have two children who have grown up. Like there's a lot of things going on in my world too, that plenty of times it's, we've either had to, you know, re, reshape what we're doing which you definitely know a big part of as of late or i've honestly sat there at the end of the edge of the bed like i'm not doing this anymore this is crazy but it's too much fun um like i said we have families there that are we've got yeah did you hear him he's so excited yes he he's Eddie, so excited I, for Eddie, i'm i'm grooming him to be a project nerd i did so we're gonna i gotta put him on the staff page now um he, sure. he's he's in the credits uh no uh, but that's the great thing about it is it's this thing that is sitting here right now like you hear your young one i mean just last weekend my daughter was at the film festival with us it's family building bigger family if that makes sense i, yeah, I think totally. how many of how many of y'all are coming out for a full week for my wedding and involved in different aspects of it and it's like we have to shut down the entirety of project Nerd for the wedding because everybody <laughs> everything will be out here. grinds to right. a halt um but it's that i think uh when i think of it as a very personal personal note um nine, 10 years old when I first got in the comics, I've always wanted to create stuff. And we talk about that on every aspect of Project Nerd. All of us here are creators who want to create things. One of the things I wanted to make was comics. And we definitely had that point in time. It didn't go exactly as planned. Maybe there's more to the story to come still, but Project Nerd Publishing uh, was a huge thing uh, that I think just for me to hold a physical copy of a thing I wrote and made was pretty sure. amazing. And if anybody wants to hold a copy, I got 6,000 copies of Billy <laughs> under my son's you bed. You can. You too <laughs> you can. can hold a copy. Um, I think it's 600, actually. My bad. 600. Um, 6,000 would be a lot. But um, <laughs> uh, the other thing, too, is that that moment, and you know this from being on a podcast and being on series and stuff, that moment where I think you just didn't expect it. And early analytics 
it's hard to tell the story. And it was hard for me to even understand the story because that was new to me. So we were at Chicago and Tyler, Adam, myself, a few others. Um, but Tyler and I recapped the story. No, actually, it was here in Denver. It was here in Denver was the first one. And we were near the exit. Um, gosh, uh, two or three years into the brand. And you just had these people that walked by and pointed at our signage. It's like, Project Nerd, love you guys. Listen to you all the time. And just kept walking. And we're like, wait, somebody besides our moms listen to our podcast? Like, this is amazing. I think that and you're was like, that. wait mom why are you wearing <laughs> oh, a disguise why is why is mom in denver at a comic god no less no um but you know like that was a big moment of being like oh like oh shit we're reaching people you know like you can see a number on a screen that says you're reaching tens of thousands of people every month but when somebody actually verbalizes it to you it's that weird difference right uh, totally, a hundred percent. I will say that the so the very first con that I met you at and I met the team at was Ocon back in 2019, I think is when it was. Um, and back back then, is that right? Does that sound right? 2019 could have been 2018, 2018? dude. Could have been 2018. Okay, could have been 2018. Um, so when when we met there, um, the, I had the same experience. Jay and I had been doing our show for I don't know, I think three or four years at that point. And um, high five the podcast, also a part of the Project Nerd Network. Um, but at the time, we had been doing that and going to Ocon, which I found out later, you guys were super instrumental in actually like putting the con together. But at the time, we just thought, look at that amazing group that has a huge like streaming lounge across from our booth um, that's doing really cool stuff all weekend. Um, but we had that same first experience. That was the first show that we went to where we set up a booth. And we had some folks come by and they were like, high five the podcast. I listen to you guys show all the time. And we were like, what you do? Why? You know, like it was, it seemed so strange. And right. so that's, I can the, totally... that's the first question of why, what, right. what's the catch? How much money are you asking for? But no, sure. <laughs> actually, I think my first question was, are you sure you're listening to high five in <laughs> the podcast? And there are several high five podcasts with that in the name. And they were like, no, no, no QJ. And I was like, okay, you do know who we are. That's crazy. This is so weird. Um, but I remember thinking, man, these project nerd guys, they've got it. They've got something cool going on because at the time at the event and to kind of paint a word picture for those who have listening and who haven't been a part or seen one of our events live, um, you know, we tend to have kind of a, a fairly big presence if the con will have us. And what that can mean in a lot of ways is we'll have like a, a recording lounge set up often called like the project nerd lounge or the Pro project nerd live stream lounge. But at the time, I mean, there was just like chairs. People could come and sit and watch um, guests or con attendees come by and sit down with hosts from Project Nerd. You guys were recording shows live there, episodes of specific podcasts or series on the network. Um, and that kind of stuff is so awesome. And I was just enamored by it. And I was like, I have to be a part of that. And here we are several years later and I get to be and it's and it's awesome um, because it is I've had the most fun with Project Nerd that I've had in my entire life doing entertainment stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, not only just getting to be a creative because Project Nerd has created such an environment of collaboration. And I think that's a huge part of what makes Project Nerd special and unique is it really is a collaborative environment. I don't think one series that has ever joined the network in the history of the series was told before they joined the network. We love your show, but before you join us, here's some notes that we need you to change or some things like we want you to drop that host or change your title or whatever. Instead, it's been Project Nerd folks, you yourself, being passionate about other people's passions. You know what I mean? Um, and I think I that's awesome. I think so. I think you, I appreciate all those kind words because to me, that's what I feel like. That's not just Project Nerd. That's the world I want to live in. I want to yeah. be surrounded by creative people creating things. We're, it, we're all at our best when we're creating, whether it's something I personally like or not. And there's stuff on Project sure. Nerd that I'm not crazy about. I'm not a huge anime fan. You can find tons of blog posts and anime costumes and, and anime interviews and stuff, right? And people love anime. And people love creating different aspects. I 
think just creating is our driving force. And when people come along and see us and they're like, some people, I mean, you've talked about it in the, the, the weekend or so talking to certain people. It's like some people might see it as an imita- intimidating presence at first, others more. But once you actually see it a little bit more closely, you're like, oh, this is like it's inviting and we can just create. And if I pitch my creative idea, um, but you're right. I, I think you and Jay jumped in pretty quickly. Y'all have been a, a huge part of the brand since and loved having you guys on board. You've definitely, I mean, you play an intricate role now in the events piece. And it's just, we see a lot of people come in thinking, I, I want to do something. Some with a defined podcast or something like that. And others are just like, hey, I just want to be a part of this. And how can I be a part of this? And it's like, come on in, come on in. Totally. I think that's a great thing. And I think that's a good thing for anybody who's watching or listening right now to take away as well is if you've been listening to Project Nerd for a while, or again, if you're a first time kind of listener or viewer, and you're interested in being a part of Project Nerd, there's no gatekeepers here. Like, you're welcome. Submit, ask, in- inquire, if you will, reach out, uh, because that's that's how Project Nerd is going to continue to grow. It's going to be you know, working with collaboratively other people who have interests or excitement about, you know, anything really. I mean, that's kind of Project Nerd's motto, right, is you can nerd out about anything. So anything you have a passion about, except for Nazis, (laughs) you're welcome. You're welcome to bring here. If you if you're passionate about Nazis, go to another network, please, or drop off the face of the earth, whatever, (laughs) whatever works better. Um, But uh, sincerely, I mean, I think w- woodworking, you love making chairs or tables, come talk to us about it. You know what I mean? Let's make a video about it. Let's make a podcast about it. You know, um, there's there's tons of opportunity. Now, I do want to ask, we've talked a little bit about kind of the past of Project Nerd, um, but w- what is a little like peek at the future of the Project The tough Nerd? questions. The tough questions, I know. right? Well, we've been talking Project Nerd TV and it's definitely like so many other adventures with Project Nerd. We we go all in on things, and sometimes that means you have to change course after it's already out there, right? Like it's just you have to. Um, it's still a thing that we're passionate about, we're excited about. Uh, we've got a lot of things hopefully to come around that. Uh, it, an idea whether it's our own platform or a way we're creating on another platform outside of the YouTube world, right? We want to create bigger and better. Uh, our production projects that we're doing, we're making TV shows now, uh, pilots that are out there for, uh, you know, that are being pitched and viewed, um, maybe some sneaking out onto the internet either shortly after this or now. So I don't, I don't know where we're at. I can't say it. No, we're going to, um, we're going to try and jumpstart these shows like right. Deadpool. Like right. it's just going to like, I don't know who leaked it, but uh, we should make that movie. What? Somebody made Let's <laughs> Eat? What? What is that show? Um, you know, great content. We've, um, I think, right around here, if you haven't heard it already on Project Nerd, our own film festival that's coming in partnership with somebody. Uh, I mentioned publishing coming back, other things. I think what we're really doing is just getting grounded to saying we want to create so wide. And so many times, there's a lot of times where we try to do it and just get it done. And there's just better ways to do it. And you mentioned that collaboration piece often comes in. So I think you're going to see a lot in this year 11, uh, or it is in year 10, I guess, because we just hit the dead there. So in year Building 10. towards year 11. Year, exactly. Uh, you're going to see a lot of collaborations with other brands and other other you know companies and things too that are going to help get some of these dreams, these creations, these things we're doing and want to do off the ground a little easier. And I think that's going to be awesome because it it just does more of what you just explained of us doing in the first 10 years. We're just going to expand how we're collaborating. Um, and in doing so, get to do all the things we want. I don't know. Maybe there's a Project Nerd Cotton Candy on the way. I don't know. There, there's not. There's not yet. There but should I, be. I'm kind of thinking yeah, I'm kind of thinking about it now. But yeah, I don't know. A lot of creating, of course. Um, I think, though, we're really focusing on the productions and the event production so like actually doing production stuff at events like live streams and the opportunities to direct and produce and create on that on that field is something that i know you're passionate about right like i'm passionate about and a lot of others involved in the brand so we we have we're at the right place to to try it and i think it's gonna be fun yeah i think that's super exciting um i also really love the idea of 
uh, Project Nerd flavored jelly beans. I don't know what Project Nerd tastes like. It would be this color, I'm, right? I'm sure it tastes like like what is that? Like a purple, a a pinkish purple. Tastes what like does it shirt. Taste like? <laughs> it does. Okay. It tastes like so shirt. for everyone who was wondering, PN tastes like shirt. Yes. Um, but no, I I I'm very excited about all of the opportunities that are kind of coming this way. I think. 10 years has looked good on PN and I think the next 10 years are going to look even better. Um, I'm very excited to be part of the team. I think we have a bunch of crazy talented people um, that want to bring all sorts of crazy creations to the world. Um, you know, I'm excited to kind of see all, uh, some of these outlets and some of these things, the film festival that you talked about. That's so rad. Like, what is it? I mean, here we are 10 years in and you just said the words on an episode of, yeah, so we may have our own film festival coming or we may have announced it. I mean, think back to 10 years ago, Iggy. Was that was that even like a concept of I mean, how much does that blow your mind? Just here we are 10 years later. And that's even a phrase you're saying. Uh I it, I don't know because it's it nothing shocks me anymore with Project Nerd as, as arrogant as that might sound it goes back to what we're saying we have people that give you know one meme share or one blog post edit a year to people that are putting in hours a day of contrib contributors so we have such a wide variety of people that give time that are from all over the world like all over the country especially um, and an idea can come from anywhere. So nothing shocks me anymore because like you said, everybody that's here is passionate about creating and those ideas can be crazy. As in terms of a film festival, it's exciting. I love film festivals. And to be honest, never had been to a film festival until we randomly heard in our first year, the commercial for the Tall Grouse Film Festival. And we contacted them, went down there and we just haven't missed it since, you know, Outside of obviously 2020, I think everybody missed it, unfortunately, but it's, it was just, it's mind blowing fun to be a part of these events, whether it is a film festival, whether it's a comic convention, whether it is a, a, a private party, you know, that's like just a large party we're helping with or an event opening. And I think having our name and our, imp and our, Sw say sway impression our our ability sure. to put our fingerprints on it is going to make it pretty incredible and even more exciting than i can probably even imagine right now i guess is the way so yeah I, I i love that now i'm gonna ask you a few like normal questions here oh. um things that for the fans for the fans, uh, for the fans. uh Susie g writes it no, <laughs> okay. um but one of the things I want to know, just from a fanboy perspective, is like out of all the moments over the past 10 years, what was what was the most like starstruck you've been or the most like situation like person? It could be a person you've met. It could be an opportunity that you got to participate in. But what was the most like geeked out you've been over something? So I don't get starstruck very easily on a lot of things except when you um, met me people. i remember it was just I, I didn't want to bring it up i was getting a little nervous just even thinking <laughs> about it um but seriously i think the geeked out the most geeked out i've been is uh well there's there, one thing i like to do i'm gonna go this route first one thing i like to do is when it is people uh you know whether it's writers celebrities it, whoever it be that we interact with that another part of the team really likes we like to give them a hard time and Adam, I've brought up already before, he's been here pretty much the whole 10 years. And there was the one year where he was, he was, we drove out to Denver. So we weren't, I wasn't living in Denver yet. So we drove out to Denver and him and his wife were coming later and they went to a concert first because their anniversary was right around that weekend at Denver Comic Con. And um, Max Brooks was here, the, the author, you know, Mel Brooks's oh, yeah. son. And... I think something happened to where Adam and Lord just couldn't make it at all. And so we had Max Brooks do an interview with us. And then he signed a book that was like, sorry, you couldn't make it Adam and gave him the book. <laughs> and so something like that kind of geeks me out. Cause it's funny. Um, but it's also at the same time, as much as we're, you know, messing with Adam at the same time, he just got an autographed Max books for it. <laughs> like right? totally like, it, like with a little personal message that has a story behind it too, you know? Um, the same happened with uh, when we were in Colorado Springs. Um, 
uh, with a uh, gosh, Freddy Krueger. Um, why am I blanking oh, on his name? Yeah, yeah, I I am also now blank. I think it's <laughs> contagious. I don't know what's uh, happening. Apparently, is we'll we'll think of it in, in a minute yeah. when we're talking about something yes. else. Anyways, another one to harass Adam on because uh, he had just moved to London when we did that one. Like literally just moved, so he couldn't didn't have Robert time to England. Go. Thank you, Robert England. And uh, we literally, you literally just said London, and we couldn't think of Robert <laughs> England. <laughs> That's fair. Um, but anyway, so you know, we took pictures of me interviewing him, and I, I think a couple friends sent him the picture, and he was just like, uh, "So we've done that with a few other people. I've picked specifically on Adam here. For me personally, my childhood is a lot of nerdy things, uh, but Ninja Turtles is definitely a significant part of it." And meeting Kevin Eastman for the first time was cool. Moderating his panel for the first time was even cooler. Going back and knowing now that at a couple different shows he does that I moderate his panel every time and his wife, rem- like they remember who I am, including his wife talks to me behind the scenes and things going on. I, I don't think as a eight-year-old Ninja Turtle obsessed kid, I could ever imagine that being a thing in my life so that is pretty cool when i think about it uh the other thing too is he's an artist aunt lucia who does the bombshells and has gotten really big with dc i think what i get really excited about is seeing these people grow as we saw him as just a midwestern artist at some of these midwest convention shows and then he did those bombshells and just became a bombshell himself and the fact that him and his brother and his family are I mean, I'd almost dare say it. They're like Project Nerd family. Like we know them, we get them to shows, we hang out with them. I love talking to his brother just as much as him. It's it's pretty awesome. Uh, so those, I think, are the experiences that really I geek out about. I love that. I think that's awesome. And I think that's one of the important things to remember is, you know, no matter how big Project Nerd grows, no matter where Project Nerd goes, Let's see if I can rhyme one more thing like hose. Um, let's not let's not talk about Project Nerd hose. You, you should have said, you should have said mm, nose. <laughs> no, um, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but uh, sincerely, as 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 big as the network gets, or as big as the reach or our fingerprints get, I think it's important to remember that everybody at every level of Project Nerd is just a passionate person about these things. There's yeah. not one of us that puts on a suit and is like, well, I suppose if I have to slum with the artists or I suppose if I have to watch these films or I suppose every one of us is so genuinely excited to just get to play in this sandbox and yeah. talk to the amazingly talented people that we get to both at a like stardom level but also on like just a regional creator level because it's just really awesome to see talented people succeed. Um, And I think that that's what project nerd is kind of all about. Um, Yeah. The friendships we've built with like, I don't costume, but I know you don't do the cosplay either. Like, but the, the project nerd is cosplay. Like we are so ingrained in that community and the long standing friendships we've built and you just get online, you know, we log online to social media and you see a new costume that was just made and you're like, how did you even do that? Yeah, it is just like you said, these it's just mind blowing. And these aren't a level celebrities. These are everyday people, you know, like because a level celebrities aren't they're every other day people. <laughs> but any but you know what I mean? There, there are other people that are doing a day job on the side and doing this stuff. Totally in their free time and they're making these things that are just, or the, co- the independent comic creators we meet too. Like the respect I have for those people, you're doing it too. You are making comics on Definitely. the side of doing everything else. It's not easy. And so those no. people that get out there and show off that art and that writing, it's just pretty incredible. It is incredible. And I appreciate that. And I think that that's, that's what I value most about being a part of project nerd is it's a, it's a brand and a name that I can happily hang my hat on and and feel good about being a part of you know what i mean yep Beep. There you <laughs> go. i do um, I know exactly what you mean and i think that that's awesome you know now that i've been doing a lot more events with project nerd i think the 
the point that you said earlier, when you get greeted happily at a show by people who are just like, I love you guys. And it may not be me particular because, you know, this person may have never seen or met me before, but just the brand as a whole brings a lot of people a lot of joy. And I think that that's kind of the mark of a successful brand, right? Like that's, that's the mark of a successful team is if you're bringing happiness into people's lives, you're making them excited about things, then you're doing something right. And probably a lot of something's right. Right. Um, I, I oh, like I, I like what you said there before before you move on. I just want to yeah. say that because you use the word success there. And I think that's important, um, you know, because as we talk about, this is still a passion project for many. We're still doing this for fun. We didn't sell to Comcast. We didn't anything like that. Right. Legendary Pictures didn't pick no. us up. But Comcast, I'll leave my number down at the bottom. <laughs> right. I mean, we're not against it. Um, <laughs> getting, but point being is. I, I don't think that makes this first 10 years any less successful. We've had to pump the brakes on things. We've had to change course. We've had to do this. Everything we've wanted to do, not just you and I, everything, anybody who's gotten involved with this brand, like you said, they've spoken up and wanted to do, whether it's meet somebody, be a part of an event, create a comic, make a podcast. We've done it and we've done it well. Like, I think we've done it really well. And, And we have numbers that show it. We have traffic on the site that when we talk about people, they're like, oh, wow, you guys pull those kind of numbers. We have, I mean, award-winning improv people, you know, on podcasts, right? Like we have stand-up comedians doing specials for us. We have, I, we've done comics. I think one year alone, we raised over 80 grand on Kickstarter, just doing comic projects when our publishing was at its height. Like we, I mean, your comics with a publisher, like we've done these things and we do it well. And I think that to me defines success, but it also shows how passionate the entire team and, is yeah i would i would agree with that and i i think that's actually a perfect segue into what will probably be one of my final couple questions here and one way one will be i do love a good segue and i mean i also like the, the ride <laughs> the, the like, okay. vehicle of transport but i also like a good uh, okay I've, have you ever been on one i have to sidetrack you for a second have you ever actually ridden? I, I have have you no no i've never okay. actually been on one surprisingly they are they are shockingly more stable than you would think. Really? Okay. Okay. My, See, my brain tells me, like when I stood on work. it, was this should not, <laughs> this should not, this should feel like I immediately want to like fall forward or flip backwards, but it doesn't. It's actually like kind of weird. Have you ever ridden okay. a hoverboard? Uh, n- no. Like the kids do, like the cool, like <laughs> I you know, um unfortunately I haven't. I I was afraid because I heard it can't go over water. Yes, that is true. It cannot. Um, It's very, it's very similar to that. Like in that it kind of like it self stabilizes. So once you get kind of it's, but yeah, I, I, for a long time, I wanted a a segue to just be my mode of transportation. (laughs) Okay. Fortunately, I I remembered that I was poor and that was not fair. And that was not a possibility. (laughs) Um, But uh, one of the things I do want to ask, and that actually is also a good segue, um, is if you could put any pie in the sky dream out there right now, no matter how far fetched or how big it would be for Project Nerd, like if you could, you know, like some people put things on their vision board or if you could will something into existence, vision board, (laughs) what would you what would you say is something that you you personally really want to see? for project nerd let's say in the next 10 years any uh, um you just it brought me full circle i guess i want to work with zach braff because i was just thinking of the vision board being like uh, his dream journal it's like <laughs> you have a unicorn on your journal that's a horse with a sword on his head and his name's kevin and he protects my dreams um but uh <laughs> i, I sorry i it's so great and i get sidetracked very easily your answer or the answer to your question can change depending on the conversation we're having, I guess, okay. because I, if I have a, something that I think is a positive for what I'm able to do with Project Nerd could also be something that holds me back a little bit is I want to create everything. I don't want to just create this one thing. I want a podcast. I want to make a documentary. I want to create TV shows. I want to be on a TV show. I want to make comics. I've made comics. I want to write something for beyond a comics i would hell i'd write a book i want to you know like i would love time to blog again i want to continue to expand our apparel line and design things graphic design work like that just makes you know that i i i want to 
you know, be an editor on a project in terms of video editing, like as I try to grow that. So I think it really does kind of go where, where we're talking about in terms of what I would like for Project Nerd to accomplish over the next handful of years. That's a pie in the sky level as a brand. I think we're on the right path to make our own feature length documentary. And I want it to be an impactful documentary. And we've talked about this in previous live streams and things like that. I want to make a documentary that says something important. And I think we can yeah. do that. I think we can do that. Yeah, I would agree. I totally think we can do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw out my personal pie in the sky. Yes, yes, do. Uh, for Project Nerd. So what I would like to do is I would like to, and this is this is big and generic sounding, but I would like to kind of change the way that people think of media companies Can't when, no. when they think. <laughs> that is impossible. No, no. Uh, yes, no, that's actually, I like that. Even though it's I would, vague, I like it. Yeah, go it, is, it is vague, but I think... I think the the point is there is that I would like to because I think Project Nerd has a real um, we have a history of disruption. I think we kind of disrupt the norm of of things that we disrupt. Um, we don't try to ape a lot of things. Instead, we kind of carve our own path. Some people may have called it like naive being naive. Some people may have called it being green. I call it being successful. Um, I think. I think a lot of times having the courage to, you know, I, I'll, I'll equate it to this. Here's a here's a good analogy. I had a conversation. I got a really awesome opportunity to write a, a, a screenplay for a television series a couple of years back. And um, I wrote this screenplay that was awesome. And um, I showed it to some people and some people loved it. And the guy that I was writing it for gave me maybe the worst feedback ever. And I don't think, I don't think for a minute that it was because it wasn't a good idea. It was because he was looking for something that had already been done and I was doing something different. Yeah. His, his question was, he was like, have you ever read save the cat? And I was like, yeah, but first off save the cat is for feature film and this is a television series. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation, but he was like, save the cat is what I want. And I was like, yeah, but, Somebody had to write Save the Cat. And that's what I want Project Nerd to do as a company. I want us to carve our own path. And I, I think by doing that, we can, we can go beyond any of the dreams that we have for the brand or the company. We can embrace new ways of doing things. We can embrace new ways of putting things out. We can embrace new collaborative uh, partnerships that have maybe never been kind of thought of or positioned before. So that so when I say that I want to do something different, when I want um, to kind of disrupt, when I want to change that landscape, that's what I mean. Um, and I think Project Nerd is poised to do that in the next ten years. If we if we kind of put focus and 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 put fear aside and just go, hey, this should work because we want it to work, then I think that there's I think that there's opportunities there, and I think that's what gets people excited. So. I I, I, I love it. I loved it. And a couple things, uh, one, just a plug that I went to Hamilton yesterday. Um, <laughs> in much, but in Hamilton, I let, I've seen Hamilton before. And for some reason, this time, humble brag, got it. Right. <laughs> that one wasn't meant to be, but it did come out. Um, <laughs> the first one was jokingly. Yeah. Point being in Hamilton, whether you've listened to it, watched it on a nap or actually seen it. Um, you know the the whole concept of Alexander Hamilton, at least in that telling of the story, is he is relentless. And because of that, he may not be better than certain other people. I, I mean, he even acknowledges in certain things Aaron Burr is better than him. But he continued to disrupt Aaron Burr's career because Aaron Burr played it safe and he did not. He went for it. And I think... That was a takeaway for Project Nerd, again, that that we do that. And sometimes I get worried and sometimes I get scared. And I have to remind myself, we've been the most successful when we've just done it. When we've just gone out there. and did, I brought up the whole Tyler's like, let's just throw a microphone on the table. Let's just ask the for the interviews. Like when we've just done it, it's it's worked. 
Um, and then I think something you said recently on another podcast that was pretty profound was comparing it to Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg doesn't reinvent genres. He elevates something that's there and makes it better. And I like to think that we've always kind of done that. Not to say other people don't do things as good as we in certain areas. There are some obviously amazing podcasts out there. There's some great, great podcasts that you may never even heard of and some great ones from celebrities that are doing. I love listening to Kevin Smith and, you know, Michael Rosenbaum's. Uh, but point being is that you're, what you want is something we're already doing in containers. And I think you're right. I think once we break from those individual containers, it's just, it's going to be, I like it, disruptive. I like it in yeah. a positive way, in a positive yes. way. We're not, we're not like, keep your Molotov cocktails at home, folks. We're not, <laughs> like, we're not trying to burn the system down. <laughs> but what we are trying to do is change the system from the inside. You're right. You're right. And, and things that many brand, and here we go, here we go. Being different as a media company, let's talk about behind the scenes that others don't. When we have yeah. people collaborating with us on TV shows, we tell them there are no lanes here. You're not, you're not offered this role, you know, getting this share or, or being paid to just show up and do this one thing. If you see something that could be better, you're a part of this project, speak up. And that is what we tell the on-screen talent to the producers to the to the the stuff we hand to the editor. Hey, this is what we envision, but you're an editor. You know better. Like make it like if you see something that even doesn't have to do with you editing, you're watching every piece of this. Like tell us where we could be better. And that's just a one small way that I think envisions what you were talking about, which I am totally on board for, um, is the us shaking up what a media company looks like, right? Yeah, I think I, I totally agree. I think that people we have been um, people. The response has been very unsurprisingly pleasant um, when we have told people that. And it, and it makes <laughs> unsurprisingly <laughs> boring. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no um, drama I, whatsoever. <laughs> I think people have been very excited about that because that's just not the way things are done. You know, like people people normally come in on a production and you're hired for a very specific thing and that's it. And we're, and you're trying to create one person's vision. And while we may want to guide the visions, we know, we know because it's the entire way that project nerd has succeeded and gotten to the point that it's at now. We know that there are a million other people who all are talented in their own disciplines and ways that can provide to the overall whole of project nerd. And we don't want to have that hubris of going, well, my vision's the best. Instead, we want the best idea to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like whoever yeah. can bring to the table, the best, most amazing thing. That doesn't mean some people may be listening to that and be like, wow. So you make everything by committee. No, nah, not so much, but what we do is we <laughs> encourage... committee would show up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What we do is we do encourage people to just think outside of their role. You know, we want our editors to play director. If I think that offers people a level of ownership in a project that makes them care about it, that makes their work better. That if I it. show up as the on screen talent, but I know that the production is willing to hear my ideas, I'm going to try harder because. I now have an ownership in this as opposed to just being a pay for play monkey. You know what I, I mean? I agree. And completely. so I think people get super excited about that and that's what makes us excited. And I think, um, I think we're going to see a lot of a positive response and a lot of things come out of that. Right. No, I think you, you mentioned something strong there. Yeah. It may not, everything we do may not always be by committee. Um, at even the idea creation, but once you're involved with it, your, your voice is heard and, I think that's important because I mean, look at us. Like we're we're two white bearded dudes. I, mean, I don't understand what you mean. Do we have similarities? I mean, th this this uh, go out on the street in Denver and tell me when when you don't see this. But <laughs> point being is this isn't everybody in our community. I can't no. say what other people want. And even the people that look like me, I make the joke about it physically. Like I mentioned earlier, anime. I don't I can't speak to that but that's a huge part of nerd and geek and pop culture now. Like and it's mainstream almost now. There are certain series totally. that are, and we want to hear from the people that have ideas and thoughts and suggestions on it. And you're exactly right. I think when you, 
when you feel like your voice is heard, it makes you feel better about that project for sure. Yeah. It's one of the things that we've tried to carry over. And when, when I'm talking events with, with um, convention owners and creators, one of the things that I always like to position is celebrity guests are great, right? But what you really care about at a convention, what the convention really cares about is its attendees. It's the people who are paying money to come see those celebrity guests or hear right. or hear conversations. And all those people want is to feel special. You know what I mean? Is to feel like a part of their favorite thing. And I think that that's where Project Nerd excels both on our production side and at our event side is that we help the people who love things feel special and important, whether yeah. it be inviting them to come work with us or spotlighting them and letting them have their platform for a minute to say, Hey, I handmade this costume this past weekend and it, I feel really great about it. Um, or I just met Giancarlo Esposito and he was the most amazing person I've ever met. And we give them that moment to feel special, to feel a part of something. And I think that's what Project Nerd is at its core is like we are a community of people who love things, are passionate about things and passionate about people's passion. Um, a lot of passion there. So much passion. We're like a passion pit, which is cool. a band. Please don't like strike us for <laughs> mentioning their name but anyway <laughs> point, point being is uh project nerd has come a long way in 10 years and i have no doubt that in another 10 years it will it will look like a completely different entity hopefully with the same core and values at its heart but you know who knows maybe we will be adding networks into our infinity gauntlet like disney who, who knows who knows but um, we're not challenging all you, I have Disney. To, we're not challenging you. <laughs> all I have to say is in the most non suck up way possible. Thank you, Iggy, for creating this environment that we can all have a part of because it's a lot of fun. And it's like I said, I said it at the top of the show and I'll say it again. It's been the most fun three or plus year, three or four years now that I've ever had being it's both been a, a fan and a creator and it's been a rough couple of years in this world it right? has, so, that's it has been, so that's saying a lot <laughs> yeah i i flip it i say thank you i thank you everybody i know when it comes down to it on paper and the money and and stuff like that project nerd is you know this is it, it my face is linked to it but it is over the 10 years uh over 100 people probably when you really if i was to get down Wild. sit down and count everybody that's been involved. And I mentioned whether it's a person that wrote like four or five blog posts for us, you know, seven years ago, or whether it's a person that contributes a meme here and there into a social media group, whether it's a person Quentin, like you, that's, that's putting in crazy amounts of man hours to help push us to the next level. I, everything has happened based on the, all the people involved. Um, even people that aren't involved anymore. Um, it's just been a fantastic ride for me as well. The opportunities I've had, the people I've met, the, I, I don't have, I, I have like, I can count the amount of friends I have here in Denver on one hand because all of my friends are spread all over the country because of the convention <laughs> circuit, right? Yeah. Like it is, um, joking aside, it is, is given me long, it's given me friendships and relationships that will last for forever. Project Nerd was to just, we get in this podcast and I message you, uh, we're done. Like, I well, I don't want that to happen, but I wouldn't regret what we put into those 10 years because everything I've experienced, everything I've gained about it, the relationships I've built, the friendships, the, the friends that I had from elsewhere that I pulled into it and introduced them to a world that just built further relationships. Um, you know, my fiance being involved with it now and, and embracing such pop culture things that she never had before. It's all dare I say it, magical. It's magical. And it disrupted my boring life <laughs> and has, I am just made it to be, I can't imagine a world without Project Nerd. Yeah, same. I can't either. 
And here's to 10 more years of disrupting the norm in media companies. Uh, cheers. I'm going to use my Porg mug. <laughs> cheers. Boop. I can't, can't uh, cheers water because it's bad luck. Don't, so. don't, <laughs> don't sue us, Disney. Um, <laughs> But I will say, uh, before we wrap up, if you guys have enjoyed this episode of Press Play, there is many, many more episodes to come. There's one episode <laughs> before, but uh, it can it contains 100% less navel-gazing than you've listened to on this episode, <laughs> uh, which may or may not be a bad thing. 90% uh, less, not no, 100%. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, but there's tons more, so make sure you check it out here on the Project Nerd Podcast Network if you're listening to the audio version. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, you hit that little bell icon so you get reminded of all the amazing videos that come your way from the Project Nerd Network. And if you're viewing it on the website, which you're welcome to do as well, then you're probably at project-nerd.com. And go ahead and favorite it. Add it to your little bookmark browser tab thing. If that's uh, not the website you're on, let us know so we can yeah, follow up So with the website we can get litigious. <laughs> yes. uh, but we, uh, we appreciate you. 10 years would not have been possible without the people who listen and view these, these series and the next 10 years will be equally as dependent on you. So we ask that uh, again, you continue listening, you continue interacting, you continue doing these things, but even more so if you've ever thought to yourself, Hey, I want to be a part of that. Well, now is the time. If not now, then when go ahead and reach out to us, let's participate, become part of the project nerd family, join us if you will. Uh, Iggy, any final thoughts before we wrap up? No, I've, I've enjoyed this. I appreciate you, Quentin. I appreciate the team. I appreciate all the fans out there. I still, it still confuses. We made the joke earlier about when you met the first people that were kind of verbally, you know, telling us that shows, it still confuses me when I look at numbers that we are so adored. I, once I think about it longer, it doesn't confuse me as much because again, we talk about all the amazing people that are creating content here. It's, it's, it's humbling to think, or is it not humbling? Maybe it's the opposite of humbling. Maybe it's ego building. I don't know, but it's, <laughs> it's great. And I just appreciate the people. I can't wait. I know we dropped a few hints and, and bombs here, but obviously, like I said, pay attention to our whole c coverage and slate of content all through March, because we have tons of announcements and we'll always have more announcements to come, but yeah, I'm excited to keep creating. I love it. Sa same here. Let's do it. And folks, I'm going to leave you with one last question to ponder. Just like I asked those first people who told me that they were fans of the series, I'm going to ask you the same question. Why? Why are you watching Project Nerd? Now Don't you, ask now it in such a way you, like that. <laughs> now, now you can press stop.